fundamental idea of this is to take a two-dimensional sketch of something as simple as a cylinder and convert that 2D image to a 3D image. So what we're doing here is just using the basic fundamental sketching techniques to build up two identical cylinders. On the left-hand side, we're just going to leave it as a two-dimensional view. And on the right-hand side, we're going to try and build up this technique to show exactly the same three-dimensional form in 3D. Okay, so we started off with the same height, two lines, horizontal lines, moving around to draw some vertical lines and a center line. So we now have some midpoint, we have the width of the cylinder, and we have the, the height of the cylinder. Change of grip, we're down to firming in just this fundamental two-dimensional view of a, a cylinder. That's one sitting like a candle with the wick running vertically. So I'm running up and down the way on a round base. Okay. So the the basics of this is if you look at a cylindrical object, you will see the top and the side and part of the base. Okay. In a two-dimensional view, we can represent the roundness through using shade, as we're showing here with a darker edge. There's no sudden change of colour or tone on the surface of a cylinder. So we're going to assume the light's coming from the top left-hand side, so the right side of this object, which we're going over the second layer to darken in, will be the darker of the two. It tends to graduate to a lighter surface, midpoint to left-hand side, and, but again, darkens slightly towards the left. Because we're working on coloured paper, grey, uh, brown paper, just add a little bit of white pencil just to, to reinforce this idea of where the light might reflect, or its lightest surface might be. To finish any of these drawings off, it's a good idea to add an outline. In this case, I'm sketching in pen, so we'll just change the type of pen we're going to use for this and add clean vertical and horizontal lines to complete that two-dimensional drawing, render drawing, of a, a vertical cylinder. There's a significant difference when we move on to the 3D drawing, but it's based on exactly the same shape, this rectangle, which, through adding the, the highlight and the shade to the shadow, we can give the illusion of a rounded surface and we're assuming at the moment it's a circular rather than an elliptical shape and we have a cylinder standing vertically. So what next? Um, for 2D cyl uh, cylinder, it's a rectangle. For the 3D cylinder, we're going to start with exactly the same thing. So the rectangle on the right hand side has exactly the same construction as the one on the left hand side. If you can imagine looking at a cylinder from above, you're going to see a curved surface. Not exactly round, it'll tend to be squashed depending on the angle you're looking at it and give you a slightly elliptical or oval shape. And that's what we're adding between the two width markers at the top. The lower half of that, because we're looking at it at a steeper angle, will be the same width, but will appear rounder, fatter, chunkier. Hence the ellipse, or the oval at the top, is a starting point, but the oval at the bottom is fuller and more rounded. Now the difference there can be quite subtle. We've tried to make it a little bit more obvious. Once these two have been constructed, we can then firm in the upper part of the top ellipse, the two vertical lines, having to move round to get an easier sketching position. This is maybe not the best position to sketch an oval from, easier to draw them from the inside. A little bit of a flat spot appeared there on that particular sketch. But I think you can see that from the 2D drawing on the left to this 3D drawing I'm building up on the right-hand side, it looks bigger. However, the top and bottom were constructed at the same point. But because we're seeing a, a third dimension, literally, it'll appear slightly taller. So, same width, same height, same proportion. Now we're going to do the same rendering technique that we had on the 2D one. The difference is the surface that we're working in isn't a rectangle. It's got these scooped upper and lower edges to it. But again, the right-hand side, a little bit more pressure on the, on the pencil, using a, a soft pencil. In this case, I think it's a, a 3B pencil. And working gradually from the edge towards the center. Now, this is something we build up slowly. We can add more pressure through the index finger in this rendering grip and darken the right-hand side, the surface that's going to be furthest away from the light source. And because we cheat in this one, if you like, we're working on brown paper, we can add a white pencil just to, to simulate where a highlight or the brightest surface 
on that particular three-dimensional object might sit. Again, we've no outline in this. We have uh, still got a little bit more tonal work to, to do on it, but we're just building up. It's not an instant fix. This is a graduated uh, uh, addition of different types of lines, different types of pencils or pens to build it up. I'm trying to slightly correct that bottom ellipse, turn to the side of the, the drawing rather than turning the page to keep the camera still. I'll just move around the desk here to get the two vertical lines. And the join between that vertical and that curve has to be smooth. No sudden corners, no sharp edges. It's a, a, a soft blending between the curve and the straight line. So we've got a 2D cylinder on the left-hand side. And with a slight change in technique, we've got a 3D cylinder on the right. What could we do to maybe add a little bit more depth to this? What's well, kind of difficult on a 2D view, we could possibly put a little bit of a shadow. It would just appear as a sort of darkness towards the right-hand side in the form of a line. Um, again, I wouldn't do that in too many drawings. But for the, the 3D object, we can take where roughly the dark surface starts, so front and back, a slight angle, uh, two lines going away from the vanishing point, and a, a curved edge. And again, building up the tone, building up the darkness using the side of the tip of the pencil, using the rendering grip. And the three grips used in this have been the sketch grip, the outlining grip, and here we see quite clearly the rendering grip. Three grips will get you through most things in terms of sketching. But remember, it's worth going back over just to this, the define edges that maybe could be, as we're doing here, just a little bit more defined on that darker edge. The shadow certainly helps with that, and you know that the, the light source is coming from the upper left. So, there's a simple object. There's a, two or three videos that follow this that take this a little bit further, but look at it, play it back, cut the sound off if you want, and just try and build up those same skills yourself. It's a 2D view, ellipse on the top, chunky ellipse on the, ellipse on the bottom, and then clean outline, and then the tonal uh, rendering work you've seen uh, on, on both the 2D and the 3D. We touch your highlights just where the light might strike that uh, leading edge, the, the, the left-hand side, as it comes in. Enjoy your sketch.